the, the next hour uh, and introduce Lennart. Sure, thanks, Ian. So um, we have with us online from, from Mexico, Lennart Waltering, who works with CIMIT and is also part of the um, group of IZ um, scaling community, which embeds people in various uh, CG centers. Um, so he has uh, two very interesting perspectives for, for us, one in his uh, role as uh, over, overlooking scaling and scaling approaches in one of the CG centers, and another coming to it from um, the GIZ, one of our donor communities, and how they look at, at the issue of, of scaling. Um, he's also the co-author of one of the one of the tools um, that we look forward to hear more from him on. But I'll also <coughs> mention tomorrow when I when I present the the proposed ILRI function. It's one of the tools that we are looking to embed into our processes, the scaling scan. And so hopefully, um, Leonard, in your talk today, you'll be able to give us some of the broad. Um, uh, views on scaling, but also a little bit of, of an intro to the to the scaling scan and your experiences at CIMIT and elsewhere. Um, so we have we have about ten or so people in the room here in Nairobi, um, and we have another fifteen or so people online with us. Um, and we very much appreciate you making the time and looking forward to to hearing what you have to say. So um, over to you, Leonard. So thank you, thank you, Ido. It's a, it's a pleasure and an honor to to present to you, and uh, thank you for the for the opportunity. I listened in on the last uh, few minutes of uh, Larry's presentation, and uh, yeah, what he said is true. I think uh, doing uh, getting more clarity on what scaling is and how to do it, I think is of is, is of great importance. And um, Anybody who is interested in that um, and uh, is interested to to hear more or different kind of viewpoints, I think that's something that, uh, yeah, we should really try to to support that as much as possible. No? So, yeah, so I was happy to do this. And uh, my title of the presentation is Scaling of Agricultural Innovations, the what, why and how. And then this morning I added or coming to terms with scaling in the context of CIMIT CGIR. And I've been with uh, CIMIT now uh, for, um, um, as as you said, as a uh, as a GIZ uh, integrated expert. I think you have uh, uh, no, you don't have integrated experts of the, the task force on scaling within uh, within ILRI, not yet. Um, and when I'm part of that, so I'll focus a little bit on 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 really. Let me see if I can move. Yeah. Okay. Um, basically, actually, I, I could summarize many of the things that I was trying to do is, is saying, okay, what is actually meaningful scaling? And then I will talk a little bit about the scaling scan, and then there's a lot of time uh, for Q and A, which is of course the interesting part, right? <laughs> so I think one of the the things that we are faced with the clarity of scaling is is really not matched with clarity on the concept and. Uh, even uh, now, you can almost call it a buzzword, and uh, this is of course risky because people are using it in a superficial way, and also you could also do a lot of harm with it. So it's important, I think, that we have a, a clear understanding, or at least a clearer understanding, of what scaling means. And in the environment, um, I think the CGR environment, uh, especially of course, um, but also other development actors, it's very much about maximized adoption during the project. And you can see this is coming from, uh, I think, uh, a history of uh, doing discovery. If you want some kind of uh, amazing seed, of course, this is a CIMIT uh, example. Uh, you do the proof of concept, um, you do the piloting in some locations, and then uh, you go to scale, no? Like, uh, very uh, linear process and it's all about getting that seed all the way through to the to the end no but what 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 appears to be is that this this transition from piloting to scanning is really a black box and i think larry also talked a lot about this and well, that's why you have people saying pilots never fail 
scale or we have also another one I uh, heard recently uh, many pilots but there are no planes taking off or something there are many jokes about it but uh, uh, this one I think it sounds nice and actually there are two major problems for that so the first one is is, is um, that even though the project will maximize adoption but the world actually needs sustainable system change they don't need X adopters on the at the last day of the project right and the second big problem with this is uh, the pilots they happen in very controlled environment while the scaling happens in the real world and i'm gonna go a little bit deeper into those two major issues so scaling up versus going down to earth um most of the pilot projects operate in very very controlled environment expensive external experts they come in often parallel to a local system it's a bit of a black white picture i'm trying to push right just to provoke a little bit the discussion yeah? so there's heavy support for for partnerships right often a very transactional nature um you do this for me i do that for you etc expensive and intensive capacity strengthening um relying on on grants that can end also they have a fixed start and an end date and they're often shielded from politics and market forces i mean um, the donor is behind it or is 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 is, is basically finding their own market forces or or, or shielding it from corruption etc right so it is kind of like uh, this picture where um of course you don't see my finger if i pointed it but you can see the fish in the in the bowl and environment there are no waves and the water is clean etc and we say well this it works here Let, let's throw it into the into the sea but in the sea there are of course many other things and actors going around um there might be uh, other external factors that that you didn't have in a pilot environment right so there's no guarantee that this um, this fish will survive right and i think one of the main points and and also larry is uh articulate in this is is to say the context is the king so context is king not only in the environment where we want to scale because i think that the clarity is is there but also in the pilot environment that we basically create often right so both environments are determining basically for the success of that uh, of those innovations another element is that that scaling is is actually been quite complex and, um i think the people from iita they, they formulated it nicely so they said the successful scaling of an innovation requires as much at least as much in, uh, attention to uh, complementary non-technological requirements and that's exactly also what I, I just heard the last few minutes of Larry even 10 percent technology or nine and 90 percent non-technological right and all these processes and all these other innovations need to scale kind of in a in a, in a coherent way and maybe one example this is an example also from uh, from Mark Schutt I think yeah, he's going to speak to you uh, uh, tomorrow and I think the long time the discussion on electrical vehicles has been around technologization, right? It's about the battery strength and, and how many kilometers can you go, etc. But really, if without any inf inf innovations in infrastructure, how do you set up charging stations network? How do you, um, what kind of market innovations can you, um, uh, people are incentivized basically to, to buy such a car? subsidies for clean vehicles like uh, for example in, in beijing in, in china but also in many other places um, innovations in the value chain innovations also in design and that's that's a picture i think how uh, an electrical car looks like if it was designed by engineers much less attractive of course um, than of course what you see uh, on the right uh, but there's a lot of other innovations and and of course one big one Manage the fossil fuel lobby. So it was not really determining the limiting factor has not been. It could have been, might as well be in the other elements, right? And they all somehow come together, and they all take time and resources. And I think that's something that we um, at Simit and and I think it's quite a general for the CGR. We focus a lot on 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 improving the technology and and really tweaking it um, to a state of perfection almost. Uh, but we forget about 
documentation that is also required to support um, uh, to support such an innovation to basically have the impact that we want to have. No? So scaling is a bit more complex than than just uh, you know pushing something out and um, um, well basically if you want to if you want to really simplify it a lot you can get quite far if if you just talk about scaling up scaling out and and we use here the analogy with a with a pyramid and saying well the scaling out is really reaching more people right you multiply you disseminate extension etc these words come into to, to the discussion scaling up is really having uh, others support that process and and do basically the scaling uh, out for you kind of so it's really and also lift it up to another level so it's basically making a scaling out much more efficient and then one of the the things which i think is very important in our context and that i think doesn't get really enough um, attention it's always attention more on an anecdotal level or on a sideline, but I think it's really core to what we what we do is the scaling deep is really to to change the behaviors, changing the minds. And I'm really not focusing only on the farmers because that's what we like to do. It's very much is also um, changing the mindsets of us, uh, the scientists, uh, the people in development projects, the donors, uh, value chain actors also, I mean, uh, convince somebody to, to provide services to a poor farmer. This is also changes in mindset, no? And kind of that that scaling deep um, basically provides the the, the the stability of that pyramid. Because I think you, there's a lot of projects that, that go and build up very nice pyramids, but really they never made it into kind of like the new normal for, for, for all the players in the value chain to keep doing this, right? So then the, when the project is over, basically the, the pyramid topples over. So looking at those three elements and, and basically every intervention should have uh, pay attention to all three of these dimensions. Um, why scaling? So it is all part of the meaningful scaling. Why scaling? I mean, the CGI was set up in the 60s. I just had a shot at it to have development impact, right? But of course, we are not a development organization. And um, you get into um, long discussions and, and uh, I think useful discussions. Okay, where are we on the R4D spectrum? And maybe maybe in the questions, we can come back to that. But uh, let me continue with this story. I'm getting distracted already because of this. Um, so we are not a company. We're not like Coca-Cola that says, okay, we need to uh, have operational scale and, and growing market share. That That's... It's not wrong, I think, for what we do, but it's not enough. I think we focus on social impact and public good. I mean, we contribute to the SDGs. We cannot, um, let's say, uh, have adoption of a, of, a, of a fantastic innovation if thereby the whole environment is going, uh, uh, you know, is being destroyed or something, right? So we are, we have to go a bit st a step further than thinking this industrial way of scaling or this commercial success factor of, of scaling and how scaling is used in let's say the startup industry or how scaling is used in the industry in the, in the 1800s or in the 1900s in the pharmaceutical just getting bigger market share i think as for us it's a bit more complex and i think also more uh, more useful and People from the IDRC, I think they formulated it very nicely. So I might as well just use what they what they said and I adapted it a little bit. But like an organization like like Ilri also, we want to op optimally scale the impacts of innovation. So we don't want to scale the innovation. We don't want to scale basically the innovation program. We won't want to scale the sales of the product or the coverage of the policy. But often they don't really correlate, correlate with the good change that people endorse, actually, right? So there's a difference there. What matters is, is the positive impact the innovation creates for the people and the environment. And, um, and also more complex uh, and far-reaching far um, uh, look at scaling than, I think, um, like I said, the commercial way of looking at scaling, right? But I think this is more appropriate for the kind of institute that we work for. And I think actually the mandates of many of our donors and uh, development partners. 
And just one example, I mean, uh, it's, a, it's a graph that I've been using, but and every time I say I'm going to make it nice, I never did it. So it, it looks a bit shabby, but I think uh, focus on the message, please. <laughs> so let's say we have an irrigation project and we have uh, many irrigation farmers and, and they're doing great. Um, but at a certain time, point in time, of course, uh, let's say the water runs out. And of course, the benefit of the irrigation farmers goes uh, goes down, right? But if you look at the fishermen already from day one, happy with this project because the, the, the nutrients came into the water and then the, the people were putting pumps everywhere, etc. The community was happy with more vegetables, but they had let's say le less fish and maybe less uh, drinking water. And of course, then the, when the when the lake ran ran dry, of course they were not happy at all, right? And I think many of the projects, um, they focus basically on what happens in the yellow box. They say, well, let's do it for three, four years. Look, great project. There, our target is are these irrigation farmers and look, Yakuba and look at uh, Miriam. They're having so much more vegetables and, and uh, doing great. No, look, so many more people are now irrigating. And I think what, what uh, basically follows a little from that previous slide, I think our, our, our objective should be to look at, okay, what would be the optimal scale for that community and for the environment there, no? and not only focusing on those uh, irrigation farmers. And I think that's something that, that many projects are, are basically uh, kind of like a problem. If you, if you really focus so much on reaching more and, and having more is better, etc., you might lose out on this, uh, on this perspective. So trade-offs and negative consequences happen and, and, and they are beyond your target population as well. And even within your target population, happen beyond the project boundaries often, right? So you could even ask a question, is it maybe a blessing in disguise that we have not been very successful in, uh, in really scaling, no? Like I think, I think Larry show, probably showed that, no? Like 5% of the projects normally really go to scale, right? So, what we are working on, and um, also with with Larry and also with SNV from the the Netherlands and, and colleagues here at Simit, is how do we actually increase the agenda of these SDGs, like this social impact, um, into what we do and uh, into into basically a definition of scaling or or working with scaling. So the title of that article is from reaching many. No, I think that's a big focus of many people uh, scaling. Okay, just go for many to su sustainable systems change at scale. And I will, I will say a little bit more what I, what I mean there. So I think one thing about the element of, of sustainability and um, um, it's not the same as reaching scale, right? You can do a project where you hand out uh, a lot of seeds, or, or machines or whatever you want to 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 scale doesn't mean that it's sustainable right i mean if you just give it away um so there's a difference between reaching scale and sustainability um and i think in the in the frame of, of scaling sustainability refers to uh, yeah kind of like a change that perpetuates itself as basically the new normal beyond beyond the project right by the local actors and also, um, I think that uh, that idea of, okay, the reward for a successful project is another project. I think also this means that, that projects, because the scaling process is so, so complex, one project cannot scale something. No? It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a process. It's, it's, a, it's an accumulation of different projects. And many projects you're probably not even aware of that contribute to something going to scale. And things that are not within projects, but just happen within the country, right? The element of system change. So I just talked about the element of sustainability. Um, the element of system change. Um, I think it's important to realize that, that, like we said, I mean, if you introduce a technological innovation, the whole system needs to operate differently. The system can basically, where, what is the system, right? We talk about a household do we talk about a supply chain do we talk about the agri food system this whole system of actors and and rules and regulations and, and relationships and uh, history they all need the 
benefits in some way, some way or another, right? And um, therefore, I think this this uh, instead of like or, or adding maybe in that spectrum of discovery, proof of concept, piloting, scaling, maybe between the piloting and scaling, I think we can insert kind of like this framework, sector transformation framework, where you basically think about okay, something happens, first movers critical mass and then you get some kind of institutionalization which which then lead to scaling right so rather than um like a like a linear process it's more like really people coming together relationships being formed networks being built uh things becoming demands coming from the from society etc and then basically the change kind of kind of happens so i always find this a very useful uh, basically framework um to show okay how can change kind of kind of happen right another thing is also um scaling is not a linear process and uh, i think a lot of uh, uh projects or or, or or colleagues also think well this works here and then we just extrapolate it linearly um and we make a a log frame and then everything we can plan out and for the next five years and, and probably some impacts in 10 years etc um I think that's a, that's a thing that we have to accept that it's not something that we can uh, control so much as as we can control pilot environments. And I think that's maybe also one of the elements why we love to do uh, pilots and control the environment so much because we, we kind of predict what we what we can do, right? Um, so scaling is not a linear process, and you'll see that I'm from the Netherlands. Pull up this picture. And this is kind of like the story, okay, if you want to um, go somewhere in the Netherlands and you, well, you're alone, you just take your bike, you can still go there to the, to the bakery or wherever you want to go with, with four people, right? But if you have, if you have more people, you need to, to switch to a car, right? And uh, there are also limits to how many people you can, uh, you can, you can bring. But that transition, it's not a linear process. You basically need to get a driver's license. You need to go from the small bicycle lanes to the big road. You need to learn how to park. You need all kinds of new things, new regulations come into play and a new environment and new actors come into play. And the same continues, of course. If, if you, again, reach the limits of, of that, you have to move to uh, learning how to drive a, a, a bus and, and follow those rules and, and make sure that you're not getting into uh, fights with other bus drivers, etc. So there's a whole different range of of, of rules, processes, relationships, but also just just technology that you have to have the money to buy that bus, of course, right? So this, this, the scaling is not linear. The, the growth is not linear. It goes in in kind of like uh, uh, phases. Uh, you might also fall back, but every time, so sorry. The point is basically. The rules that apply to the to the woman on the on the bicycle are not the same as the, as the driver of this bus right and when you put this all together uh the last month actually we did a lot of interviews like 36 interviews with uh, colleagues here at simit uh, all the program directors and, and other colleagues here we asked them 10 questions about scaling and this was um uh well, I think this was the first three questions were about this. And when you ask people about scaling, basically everybody says, okay, well, you have to do more. It's more adoption. It's more, more, more. So basically 100% of the people really focus on this element of scaling out and include it in their uh, responses. Only half of, of the colleagues here say, okay, well, it also has to do with, uh, you know, scaling up elements, like working with, uh, uh, with partners, also making things... Uh, up to another level, etc. Let's, of course, talk about the scaling deep, like uh, uh, we add value to people's lives, create positive impact, and at least ensure that we do no harm. Uh, that also has to do, of course, with the responsible scaling. So very few people have that actually on the radar. If you ask them, okay, what is scaling? What are success factors? Um, um, uh, what you would you describe as successful scaling? Um, Half of my, my colleagues were, were referring to, okay, scaling is also not only about more, but it's also really something that continues beyond the project, right? And uh, letting go, sharing success, making other people uh, do different choices, and then basically that continues 
after we go. No? Uh, and then if we compare a bit, okay, are people really focusing on outputs? Like, okay, the adoption of my innovation is kind of like uh, what we want. Or uh, are people focusing on basically the impact that we have? And um, uh, really what, what basically what one person says, okay, it's really reaching the vision and the vision, right? And going from uh, outputs to shape, shaping outcomes, etc. So, I think this was uh, uh, a nice uh, overview from from like my colleagues here on on what scaling is and what basically comes to mind uh, immediately. And I think it it it's probably not very um, uh, places. I think people scaling they jump immediately to okay, it's it's something more. People, um, yeah, some people focus still, okay, it's something that has to go beyond the project, but few people think about this, okay, maybe more is not always better, right? And so I, I think maybe we, I, probably even linking to what Larry said, it's kind of complex what we're doing, right? It's, it's uh, making it much more difficult than just getting things adopted, right? And, and doing a big project. Um, so we try to simplify it as much as possible. And I think that that is so important because scaling is, is, is really important. I think, I think a lot of projects are happening and, and things are good initiatives are happening, but they're not at the level of where they really have an impact uh, on their own, right? So I really think it's very important that everybody, colleagues, collaborators, problems, have a bit of a better understanding of, of scaling or have a bit of a, create their own understanding or however, but, uh, understand a little bit what 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 actually we're looking for, no? Because I mean, after all, the scaling is done by local actors, no? I mean, we can we can push something, but in the end, it's it happens in those countries that we work, no? So the one, first one would be okay, scaling should be attractive. So the business case and the sense for all value chains or value chain actors. So I think the innovation should not be only interesting for the the farmer, but Maybe it's more important that it's even interesting for the service provider or for, for a policy uh, um, uh, advisor or somebody in the government. And that I, I think what's happening, right? Not always the best innovations get promoted. It's, uh, it's many other things come into play. So I think we should be aware there. I think the other one is the entry strategy is the exit strategy. And keep asking, what if we pull out tomorrow? And I think the, the, the idea of a project should be, okay, we want to change the normal. We don't want to change something within that controlled environment and then we go away and then, you know, the real environment basically sucks up that control environment and the things doesn't, don't work anymore because context is king. So really think, okay, what if we pull out tomorrow? What are all the, the, the benefits that we provide to those people in the project? What if they all fall away? What happens? No? Um, go fast, go alone, go far, go together. I think, uh, of course, is the right place uh, in Africa. Um, and it has to do with the scaling up, no? Uh, do scaling up to be more efficient than scaling out. Work with collaborators, make sure that other people are excited or even more excited than you about going in this direction. And, and the science of scaling, I think, um, go beyond what works. So a lot of pilots, okay, it, this works, but really go and understand the influence of the context and um, how can you make things work because that's, that's, that will also inform even the design of what we're doing, right? And also one very important point, which is, I think, often overlooked, scaling is, is not a, for me, it's not a hard science. It's, it's very much also an art. It also re requires pulling and pushing and, and, and making things work because in the end, the local actors have to do it, right? And you have to convince people, you have to, to work with the, the existing system. So it, that, that's an art also, right? Now I'm coming to the, the last part of the, the um, and that's, that's the scaling scan. So we developed it together with the PPP lab, Water and Food. They are a consortium of um, Wageningen University, uh, SNV, the Netherlands, Aqua for All, and the Erasmus University in Rotterdam. And I like really working with them because they're very uh, hands-on and they're very practical. And uh, uh, they're all the time like, okay, don't make it too complex. Let's make it 80% uh, right for everybody rather than 100% correct for uh, for only a few. And I think that was an important guiding principle. And I, and I learned a lot from that uh, that process. And I think that's maybe 
kind of to the to the success of this um, of this tool. Keep it simple, basically. So we basically have, have three three steps and uh, three steps for people to come to terms with what scaling means in their context. Um, how can you work with scaling? How, can, how do you get your partners on board in discussing about, about scaling, right? So the first step would be defining a realistic scaling ambition. It's kind of like a project objective, but now maybe looking a little bit more ahead. Um, then we assess the critical scaling ingredients, and then you look at actually what are the bottlenecks for, for, for your project or your intervention, right? Um, Um, so, getting a clear idea of what the desired impact is, who is involved and why is it relevant, right? So, really asking the question, what, why, how many? And we thought, okay, it's kind of, let's start the workshops and just jump straight and give maybe 10 minutes for this. Turns out, it takes a lot of time for people to really agree on it. And if you have a diverse group of partners and collaborators, or even in your project team, many times people, I was shocked to see how many times people have a different understanding of actually where they work or where or why they're actually doing this right so this is an important to get the noses in the same direction and it tells you okay what actually do we want to what is our ambition then we look at um, we say 10 ingredients um, what what you basically need to pay attention to if you want to to scale and it's just ingredients because in every context it's different. Some people might like yellow curry and some other people like green curry. Sometimes you need to go to the shop to get an ingredient. Sometimes you already have something in your cupboard. So we can pull this ingredient analogy very far. Okay, look at the status of these ingredients and see to what extent this is gonna hamper or, or promote kind of like the scaling, right? So the 10 ingredients are the, the technology, the practice, which I think a lot of people focus on and a lot of other tools also focus a lot on this element, like uh, kind of like the Rogers, okay, is it comparative advantage, the, um, the beauties of the technology, right? But in scaling, I think nine ele elements are, are as important or, or even sometimes more important, right? People should be ready um, to use it. Uh, there should be an active proposition not only financial but people can also be interested in it for um, social uh, good or, or even like Ximit we're not necessarily in it for the money we have our mission to do that right the value chain does it actually also work in reality this there and are the are the roads there to make this happen finance of course this is one of the major bottlenecks every time we we do this uh, even though people focus all the work focuses on the technology and practice uh, tweaking it uh, but the finance is often the, the weakest link. Knowledge and skills, of course, um, collaboration, collaboration, evidence and learning, um, especially in our context, I think super important to be uh, providing this kind of evidence that really get the support for this kind of like a, to create a movement towards people for people to, to support this solution. Leadership and management, and that, that's something that is also very important, I think. The effective coordination and navigation of a process. It's, it's a complex process, and people have to basically coordinate all these kind of elements and, and, and more, um, and this requires coordination, right? And, of course, the public sector governance. So how it works, basically, uh, we have... Uh, this is kind of like still the long version, but for each ingredient, we have four questions, and each question goes a little bit into those... Uh, principles that I showed before. Okay, do you go beyond the project? Do you uh, think about the sustainability? Do you uh, is your entry strategy, your action strategy? So those elements kind of come back into the um, to the question. So taking it a little bit out of the cocoon of the of the project. So that's how the the, the questions are designed. And basically, people um, uh, then score. Uh, with one to five, so very simple. One is okay, no, and five, uh, yes, this is definitely uh, the case, no. And what you can, what you have, for example, this is an example from what we did in, in the India, I think this is Russia. And basically, we had a lot of people doing the, the assessment of one team, so a team of like, say, 20 people, and they all filled it in. And then we put the averages together and even the standard deviation. This is 
complex example I have, right? But they had a very interesting discussion because they said, okay, well, we all tend to agree that the technology is not so much the problem, it's, it's very high, but we, there tends to be, uh, the issues tend to be around knowledge, awareness, but also finances, it's kind of like the bottlenecks, right? But then again, you can have a discussion saying, well, a lot of people tend to disagree about the, the, the value for finance. Let's have a discussion about that here, why is that there? And then basically you, you, you can guide a discussion and, and chop up the discussion into important elements for that scaling. And I think that's useful and, and that's the feedback also we get. That otherwise people keep focusing on the technology. People like to talk so much about the technology, but here they've, they're kind of forced to talk about the other elements and, and they say, well, actually we don't know enough about this. And then of course they would, the next steps would then be, be interesting, right? So you look at the st strong weak ingredients, also you look at the, the questions that were interesting or that stood out for, for you. Maybe you just tick through all the questions and then by the end say, well, this question was super important actually. And then you, you focus on that, right? It does, you don't have to always follow the this, this barrel structure, but then, then the question is of course, okay, what can we do? What is in the sphere of our control? What can collaborators do? And what actually can we not do? Because many times in most projects, I think we are geared not really to scale. We are really limited in what we actually can do. And we are so um, affected by the, the environment that we're in um, that we also have to be realistic in what we can do, right? And getting that realism is, I think, also an important step. So what we've done, we, we, we you saw that barrel, what we like to do in, 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 in workshops, we let teams of four or five people then draw up their barrel and then explain to the others why it's going on and what they're thinking that they can do to, to make uh, the barrel a little bit uh, fuller by fixing, let's say, the weakest links. Um, in Nepal, we also used it to have a discussion among different uh, groups. What we've been doing recently, which might also be interesting uh, for you, this is um, what we set up for a CISA project, the big Bill and Gates uh, project. Uh, we put all the questions of the scaling scan in uh, Google Forms, and people can then just do it online on their own, and then they come together actually next week. And then we help analyze the results and you see it's standard deviations. And then, and then they have a, a useful discussion about, okay, let's talk, talk, talk about finance because this is really the major bottlenecks or let's talk about collaboration and have a, a, a talk about this. So this is, we do this as a preparation for a, for a workshop here on the bottom. We have a picture of a workshop we did with um, Icarda and we also use it as a framework, kind of the scaling ingredients. We use it as a framework to compare projects. We say uh, here we used uh, um, in this article, we used to compare a um, project in Africa, Asia, and, and, uh, and Mexico. We say, okay, well, how are they doing if you look at it from a scaling perspective? And then we basically uh, had people score it and then compare a little bit, okay, well, in Latin America, it's like this in, in Asia or Mexico versus Bangladesh. No? So I'll discuss more, I think, um, well, we're active on Twitter and we have a um, blog, uh, research gate, we're also active. And of course, um, this paper describes a little bit kind of what I, uh, what I presented here. So thank you very much. This was my, my presentation. I'm, I'm, I think I'm a little bit over time, but I'm really happy to take some questions. Thanks uh, very much, Lennart. And I think uh, what you've just said and presented is <coughs> compliments very much the introduction we got from, from Larry M earlier on this, this, this afternoon. And, uh, Good to, that you were able to highlight a particular, you know, the, sc the scaling scan tool as, a, as an example of, of some of the tools that are available that might that might help us. So let me open up <coughs> for for questions again, as we did last time. Let's see if there's any questions here in Nairobi, and then I'll come to those of you um, those of you online. Anyone in the room here? Steve. Hi, thanks. This is Steve Kemp in Nairobi. So so both you and Larry made emphasize that the technology was only a component of what's ultimately needed to, for delivery as if you imagine that we imagine a magical silver bullet um, that, that is true in some cases some other stuff we do i mean inventing a vaccine or inventing a transgenic cow but a lot of the stuff we do that's not true we're looking at bundles of technologies and we're looking all the way around that circle there and so for us, I think it's fair to say the scale, scale is, not, is not qualitatively different, but quantitatively different.
So, I mean, for instance, we engage with farmers about, you know, uh, asking them what, what, should, what should the breeding goals be? You know, we don't, uh, so, so I think we engage pretty much all the way around that circle, but on a, on a pilot scale. I don't know if that's a fair comment. No, I think you're right, of course. Uh, in, uh, there's much more going on than, uh, uh, than that. And of course, it's a bit of a provocative way of presenting, okay, we focus on the, on the, on the technology, but it is, I think, a strong culture um, uh, that, I, that I see here. Um, I think that the, the, um, what you're mentioning, I think the, the bundles of technologies, yes, that's also a lot what, um, what people do. I think that the challenge really is the, um, the, the pilot environment, the controlled environment that we're in, or the limited uh, focus that we have. I mean, um, in, a, in the case of CIMIT, we, we say, okay, we, well, we do breeding for the farmers, but we do that for a particular group of farmers, right? Uh, are they really the, the target group at scale? Um, are we also in, uh, including the whole system, the people that basically have to uh, uh, to support adoption or, or make changes that that are required in the real world conditions? So um, I think in in that sense that 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 discussion on the controlled environment versus the real world environment, I think that's something that that is that is really the key of what we're trying to to say, rather than okay, it's it's it's, it's kind of like a technology. Uh, uh, technology focus because I think even within the, in that patrol environment we still tend to focus a lot on the technology and the other elements around it but still in that controlled environment is that a little bit of a response to what you no, I, th I think I think we would agree uh, it's true we do tend to work with tame tame sets of farmers in, in a controlled environment but uh, but I would push back on it. It's not completely driven by one magical technology. No, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, anyone online? Please, if just go ahead if you've got a comment or a question. I see Peter. Oh, sorry. Helen? Go ahead. Um, hi, Leonard. I'm Helen. I'm in Ilry in this. I was just interested in, um, you mentioned uh, in the pilot environment, there's a lot of emphasis on partnerships and on kind of stimulate partnership. And I was just wondering if you could say more about that. I mean, my uh, assumption in our program is that if you do put emphasis onto partnerships or, you know, working with stakeholders at the piloting stage, then that means the, you know, the, initiative is going to be more sustainable after the end of the research funding yeah i think i think you're exactly uh, right and that, that's also kind of like um, um uh, i think the point i think what we're trying to 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 uh, to picture here is that um, in the in these controlled environments in these pilot environments we work with partners that are basically paid to be a partner for the duration of the project and often these are um, uh, transactional nature, right? I mean, it's not necessarily their uh, their vision or mission to actually contribute to what we're trying to to do here. Also, they're often uh, what we see is uh, like other research institutes or, or universities, right? Whereas, what we're trying to say is that in these try to mimic as much as possible the real world condition in in at scale. So you would need partners that, that can actually reach the kind of scale that you want to have. You need to have partners that have the, the mandate to do the kind of thing that, that needs to be done. You need to have partners who have the same kind of drive or motivation to do this without your project intervention. And of course, they should then be part in, in, the, in the project phase where you're starting this, but on those kind of terms, right? And uh, it means also preparing the ownership of this coordination to those actors that will take it up later. And I don't see that often. I see it often like, okay, we're leading this from now until 2023. And after me, you know, whatever happens, happens kind of thing. So it's important to have stakeholders part of the, the pilot, but they should be those stakeholders who have a potential to continue this beyond uh, the project. 
Hello? Yes. Um, this is Niyi again, um, Impact Escape Program, Ilri Addis Ababa. Thanks very much, uh, Leonard, for the presentation. Um, the, the, the more I look at this um, scaling discussion and making it happen, I continue to find it difficult to eat from the role of the government, their uh, development agenda. The, in, in your experience, how much influence would you, would you put on the role of government? I know private sector is uh, very important, but government policy can influence the private sector to be to be um, in the value chain, to be partners in the value chain. The other is the cost, the cost of the innovation itself, the cost of its adoption. I would um, think that technologies, because many people, many of the people we are dealing with in R4D are considered to be poor, their resources are limited, emphasis of how they use those resources are also conditioned by their priority scale. Would the cost be factor that researchers should be looking at when, um, you know, proofing a technology uh, ready for scale? Yeah, thank you for that, uh, for that question. I think, yes, we should take into consideration all the, the design parameters that make a solution good for the kind of target users that we have in mind. And cost is a, is a, is a major factor. It doesn't mean that it has to be cheap, but it has to be affordable within the system. And, um, and, and I think that's what we try to, to portray also here is, okay, it has to be attractive for, um, um, for farmers, but also for the value chain. And sometimes you get into a kind of like a catch 22 is where the, the solution is so cheap that the value chain doesn't want to provide it because there's no, there's no, um, there's no incentive for them to do that. Right. So then you need to innovate in that, in that area. So yeah, it sh you should design an innovation. Basically, I think our role as CJR is to design or come up with, with scalable innovations. Um, and, and scalability depends also on, on the cost, but it also depends on the other factors that, that uh, I put here on the screen. And that's, that's for me your, your second question. Um, this is just how you pick out, for example, the governance, right? A lot of people, technology or people that work in the private sector here in the value chain group, they pick on the, the value chain is the most important. And I think that's exactly the point that we try to make. And we try to say, okay, if you have a group of people, a project team, get a broad set of disciplines in the room because everybody will, will talk like you. No, the government is the most important. No, the technology is the most important. And then you get a rich picture and you get a good and nice understanding. Because in, yes, in some cases, the governance may be the limiting factor. And you have to just check based on the context and the situation, and maybe, maybe even the time. Maybe today governance is not an issue. But maybe in two years, it suddenly is a huge issue, right? So I would say yes, but just as much as, as lack of evidence could be a problem, just as much as lack of, of, a, of a working value chain could be a problem. Um, that's one thing, I think. So we have to maintain that broader view. Um, second point is, and I think um, uh, I think Larry mentioned it because I think he, he, we sh he shared my, his presentation uh, with me. Um, Larry likes to say, okay, scaling basically happens through two channels, either through the government or through the private sector, not through, through us, you know, the, the, let's say the development uh, agents, let's call it. And I think that that's very right. I think we, especially as a CGR Institute, we should not do scaling projects. I think what we can do is pilot the scaling or, or learn around the scaling and understand it and, and make sure that other people do the right things. But in the end, it's the men or it's a mandate of the of the private sector or some kind of uh, mix between them, right? And, but it's local, it's local. 
And I think that's what we tend to, um, uh, to forget sometimes because we think we are so important sometimes. No, it's, it's us that... Okay, any final comments before we wrap up this session? Ian, I have a question. Um, <clears throat> Bonnie here with Ilri Ethiopia. Thank you, Leonard, for your presentation. Um, in looking at practical ways on the what, why, and how of scaling, for sure in this process, the issues of attribution have come up, and that's how we are trained. As researchers, we pay attention to this. So, have you thought uh, or have you had practical experience in uh, thinking through some of the performance metrics that includes paying attention to all these other partners that we're bringing on board in this scaling process? What are your thoughts about attribution? This is a, a great question and, and thank you for that because last night when I drove home, I thought, oh, I forgot to, to include this in the presentation and then this morning I forgot about it again. But yeah, thank you. That, that's a great point. And I think the difficulty for people to think beyond scaling is adoption of an innovation and looking at it as more like a, as a sustainable system change and, and the, the, the social responsibility that comes uh, uh, with it is because we are basically trapped in a system of attribution and and we have to say, okay, well, Simit did this or Iri did this. Um, and the, basically the whole success of what we're doing is based on that. You know, uh, donors say, okay, if you have an option of 100,000 farmers, you're a, a success. And then it has to be you, of course, so let's filter it out. And I think that's exactly the biggest problem and that, that basically keeps the system uh, in place and makes it difficult for us to really reach the impact and really contribute to the SDGs as I think we could and uh, we should do more efficiently. So that is, a, that is a big issue and that's why actually in most of the workshop we focus on one of the ingredients that we focus on is the leadership and management but also the evidence and learning because that's an important role that we have. And what you can do and what we see more and more often um, is, is to measure things that happen outside of the project context. So I think a lot of the monitoring goes on the direct beneficiaries. But actually in scaling, you should look at the indirect beneficiaries because these are real world people. They are not biased or they're not uh, tempted to be part of the project or they get some whatever advantages from that, no? The real people are adopting it. That's, that's more important for me than the direct beneficiaries. So people are looking at, uh, well, if, of course you have your control environments, et cetera. But what you also see an example that we have in, uh, in Bangladesh, a USAID project that they're supporting uh, service providers provide machinery to farmers. But what they also did, they looked outside of the project areas to service providers and if they are actually changing their habits and if they're suddenly including the kind of machines that we were promoting in their portfolio. And they did. And this was a very strong motivation for USAID to say, okay, let's continue with this because this is a real change in the, in the system uh, as such. So the monitor, the, it's, the thing is, it's very difficult. It's difficult to say, okay, this is because of the project or somehow related. But I think we should let go of that a little bit. And we should really say, okay, well, what is important is that, that this impact happens. And it will be difficult to say, because maybe the impact in a village came because of a health intervention that made people less worried about this and this so that they could point, put time on farming, etc. right? So the, the world is kind of like complex, but I think we should also embrace that complexity by, by giving into that and say, okay, let's, let's maybe look at some higher level indicators. So even household um, uh, or livelihood indicators and, and do kind of like a hybrid of, of remote sensing data, like looking at a bigger picture and then contributing, ground truthing it with kind of things that we have been intervening in and the kind of change that we've seen maybe on the farm or at the farmer level. But it is, um, to me, this is really the holy grail. And, and um, uh, slowly the thinking is really going in, into that direction of how to capture the system change. And I think it's going to be difficult and it's going to take a few years, but once we get there, I think the whole issue about scaling is going to flip over we don't have to attribute it so strictly anymore. Uh, we don't have to draw linear lines between 
if the farmer adopts this, this impact is going to be like that, you know, because that's also a very tricky thing that we're doing. Okay, on that optimistic note, let's <laughs> 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 do a close. It's five o'clock East Africa time. Uh, so, Leonard, thank you so much for uh, for joining us this afternoon and contributing to to this workshop we have this morning. Uh, sorry, this afternoon and and and, and tomorrow uh, morning. Uh, and I'm sure this will only be the, the the beginning of more interaction with you and 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 and. and and others. So thanks very much, everyone. Uh, to those of you online, thank you very much as well. And we'll reconvene tomorrow morning, Ido. 9.40. At 9... Really, nine. really nine. <laughs> We'll reconvene tomorrow morning at 9.45 to wrap up by uh, about 12 o'clock. So tomorrow we'll uh, link up with Mark Schutt, uh, and then we'll have a, a, an hour Ido to present some preliminary ideas about how do we begin to embrace some of this thinking within within Italy and have a more general discussion about, about that. So thanks very much everyone. <laughs>